spaghetti and scratch my ear at the same time. Ew. What's wrong with that? Well, <sighs> one hand is eating the spaghetti, the other one's scratching my ear. You can't do that? Yeah, but, you, but something from your ear might come out, you know. Things don't come out of my something. ear. <laughs> what do yeah, you mean, or a something? Speck of dust or something might come down on my the... spaghetti. Yeah. All right, let me yeah. think of a better example. Okay. You know what I can do? <laughs> I can't believe that was disgusting. <laughs> well, you shouldn't touch anything while you're eating. Well, except the fork and the plate and the food in your mouth. You have your other hand. You have one hand on yeah. a fork. Right. The other one eating a meatball. Yes. Your, your other hand, oh, I got an itchy eye. Yeah, it no. Scratch, you wouldn't scratch your eye with your left hand if you were eating with your right hand. Well, no, you have to put your food down first and then take your napkin and then do it. As long as I've known you. <laughs> I never Have I knew. Done that? I never knew it was n- disgusting to you <laughs> for somebody to eat their spaghetti and scratch the ear at the same time. I just never heard this before. Today is National Coffee Day. For those of you who are veterans of foreign wars, we stand and salute you and thank you. Today is National VFW Day. Oh, gosh. It thank you. It is observed annually on September 29th. It's devoted to the VFW organizations and those members who have served our nation. Thank mm-hmm. you, all of you men and women. Thank you so much. Here's what you are ex- are, are being asked to do as we honor our our national uh, our nation's VFWs, Veterans of Foreign Wars. Honor the VFW members and veterans in your community. Let them know that you appreciate the sacrifices they have made for all of us. By the way, foreign wars or not, I I honor all of you veterans. We truly are the land of the free because of the brave. Mm -hmm. Um, The VFW was established on September 29th, 1899. That's why this is the date. Wow. It was established by a group of veterans from the Spanish-American War. It has since grown to be the nation's largest group of combat veterans. They continue to honor the dead by helping the living. And we know it right here on Thursday as we meet those guys. Yes, we do. The VFW promote patriotism, goodwill. I'm sorry. You know what that's from? That's from eating my spaghetti and and scratching my ear. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) I wouldn't have had that happen if I didn't do that. (laughs) The VFW promotes patriotism, goodwill, and youth scholarships. They also provide military assistance and community service programs, promote youth activities, and volunteer many hours in their local communities. So, again, we stand and salute all of our veterans. Yes, we do. Thank Thank you. you. Uh, Can't thank you enough. Mm -mm. There was a, a... I was watching one of the TEDx... Uh, speaking things. By the way, Ocala has a TEDx event coming up. I should look that up and tell you when oh, it is. Oh, okay. But if you're familiar with the TED Talks, um, TEDx, I try to figure out what the X means. Yeah. It's, it's an extension of TED. And so, and TED means talks something, something, something. What does TED stand for? What does I don't know. TED stand for? There you go. All right. And I, I did find this out the other day, but I forgot. Uh, TED stands for... Uh, <laughs> no, that's not the TED I'm looking for. Teddy Ducks. Uh, okay. But anyway, the X stands for extension. So we have one coming to account. Mm-hmm. Nice. <sighs> yeah, they're pretty cool. You uh, turned me on to those. So and anyway, so anyway, there was, a, there was a lady talking and she was, um, uh, she, she woke up on, she woke up one morning in 2013. I don't remember the date, but if but it's a date you, you remember too. But she woke up one morning and she could smell coffee. Mm -hmm. And she thought, well, I'm either dreaming or the cats have learned how to make coffee. Oh. And what it was was her husband, who had been serving in Afghanistan, was home and was surprising her. And he showed up in the door of the bedroom with two cups of coffee. Oh. And uh, it was very exciting news for her. Oh, yes. And they turned on the TV and they watched the first finisher of the Boston Marathon. And she said, gosh, this guy's already won tw- run 26 something miles and mm-hmm. we haven't even started drinking our coffee yet. We should really get out and go do something. So they went out and they went to a place, I guess where they first date, their first date or something like that, mm-hmm. and sat and watched the race. They sat and watched the people coming at the finish line. And then the bomb went off. They, this was the oh. day of the Boston Marathon bombing. Oh. And she, this lady, lost a leg. 
Oh. Uh, he was also uh, covered in trap, trap no? Is that how you say it? Yes. Um, but he survived. So, and, and I don't God. think he lost any limbs, but she lost an entire leg. I, oh. I think it was her left leg. It was hard to tell. When you watch the TEDx video, she's standing in shorts and she's got pretty legs. Mm-hmm. One of them is not real. And I think it was the one on, from my perspective, on the right, which would be her left leg. Mm-hmm. But anyway, she's she's talking about overcoming adversity, overcoming that kind of a thing. That's that's her what her talk is about. And she says, the doctor, she, she says that she said, somebody said to her, what do you want to do when you get out of here? And she says, I'm going to dance because she was a dancer. Mm-hmm. I am going to dance again. And the doctor who overheard her came over to her and he said, I overheard what you said. And I I think it's my duty to tell you that I've seen many, many, many people who have had amputated legs. Nobody dances again. The chances are one in a million. And she said to him, she said to him, then I will be that one. If Mm -hmm. one in a million, then I will be that one. And, Mm -hmm. And sure enough, Robin... This lady stood on the, that uh, prosthetic leg and her real leg as if they were both real. Oh, my God. She did a little curtsy at one point at the end uh-huh. uh, to thank the audience for their applause. And it, I, I swear it looked like a real leg. It was just, just so amazing. Oh. But she does dance. And I, and those of you who watch Dancing with the Stars, I don't know if she's the one or not. Oh, oh, because I heard there was a lady on there. Well, didn't we have a guest who, whose daughter was in Dance with the Stars yes. and was also yeah. that might have been her that mom, been her that, mom. W- that we spoke to I don't remember yeah. but anyway it was just so it was so good and so let me find out when the mm-hmm. TED event is okay. coming to Ocala I remember that Paul McCartney's ex-wife danced on Dancing with the Stars a few right. years ago but you know but then we interviewed this lady whose daughter lost a leg in that and it must have been her right oh, right my right gosh. All right, so TEDx Ocala. Okay, there is there is actually. Okay, let me find this here. The in the spirit. Okay, let me find it here. Oh, my Alpha Corey is the organizer. Okay. The figures. Princess Swan is the co-organizer. That's her name, Princess Swan. I guess so. Pretty lady. In the spirit of ideas worth spreading, TEDx is the program of local self-organized events that bring people together to share a TED-like experience. I still don't know what TED stands for, but for those of you who've seen it, know it's a it's a it's a it's an event where people talk for maybe fifteen twenty minutes. It's inspirational. It's very inspirational, educational. Yeah, exactly. So this will be at the Ocala Civic Theater. Motivational. This will be at the Ocala Civic Theater. Mm-hmm. There's the t- there's the place. Here's the date: November seventh, from ten a.m. till four p.m. So it's a five hour event. Okay. 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the uh, the Ocala Civic Theater, November 7th. That's the TEDx event. And I did see um, a list of the speakers, but I don't see it on here. Okay. So, uh, but we'll have to ask Manel if she can come on and talk about it. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Speaking of the Ocala Civic Theater, by the way, before we... Yes. I was going to talk something political, but I didn't get there. But we'll do it on the other side. Okay. Um, Uranium. We have two tickets to another show at the Ocala Civic Theater. This is called Rounding Third. Mm-hmm. Let me read yep. you what Rounding Third is about. Rounding Third is a baseball play. Don and Michael are the odd couple of the Little League. Longtime coach Don Ives, or oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> longtime coach Don lives by the hardball conviction that winning isn't everything, it's the only thing. While new assistant coach Michael throws him a curve by insisting the game is all about the kids having fun, blue collar, beer guzzling, and all American, Don threatens players, including his son, the team star pitcher, oh, that they'll find themselves in the spring musical. They'll find themselves in the spring musical if they don't play to win at all costs. <laughs> <laughs> Nerdy, white-collar businessman Michael sips lattes and can barely put down his cell phone, not to mention he's Canadian, <laughs> and he doesn't fully understand baseball, but he hopes to use it to bond with his klutzy kid. When these two polar opposite personalities and principles clash, it's a whole new ball game. Mm-hmm. Will the conflicting coaches ever become team players? I've got two tickets. If you want them, call right now, 622-9622. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident for today. Clouds and breaks of sun warm, but you move with a couple of showers and a heavy thunderstorm or two. Watch for flooding downpours. The high 84 to 88. 
Partly to mostly cloudy tonight with a shower or thunderstorm in the area near the coast early on, below 72 to 76. Tomorrow, times of clouds and sun with an afternoon shower or thunderstorm, the high 86 to 90. Thursday, mostly cloudy with a shower or thunderstorm, high 86 to 90. From the Florida Weather Center, by meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Hello, gorgeous. Hi, this is Becky at Hello, Gorgeous Salon. Summer's almost over and fall's just around the corner. It's time to get that new look started. Let's get rid of those sun damaged ends and faded out color and get into something rich and vibrant. Humidity is not your hair's friend. It causes your hair to capture moisture and leaves it looking dry and unhealthy. Hello Gorgeous is a certified Brazilian blowout salon. We can tame those locks, leaving your hair healthy and shiny with a Brazilian smoothing treatment. And whether you're going on a job interview or out on a date, your hands do a lot of talking. Manicures are a must. Hello Gorgeous is a full service salon, so let us help you make a great first impression. Call us today to set your appointment at Hello Gorgeous. Our number is 352-351-5358. Again, that's 352-351-5358. Hello Gorgeous is conveniently located in the heart of downtown Ocala, right next to the historic Marion Theater. Hello Gorgeous. If you're anything like I was, the thought of getting older was the last thing on your mind. But here we are. For me, it started slowly. The lack of energy. Never being in the mood. And when I was, I could never perform at my best. I tried the pills and other treatments with minimal results and all but given up on my sex life. Then I found the doctors at New Mayo Medical Center. Wow, they made a new male out of me. Feel like I'm 25 again. I have renewed vigor, so much more energy, and no longer worry about my performance. New Mayo treated me like my situation was one of a kind. With a custom treatment plan that really works, I feel great. They can create Create one for you too. It does not matter if you suffer from low testosterone, erectile dysfunction, or just want to last longer. New Mail will help you. Call New Mail Medical Center today at 352-404-4779. 352-404-4779. That's 352-404-4779. It will change your life. 352-404-4779. Stay informed on everything going on in the villages with the Village Spectator newspaper. The Village Spectator is exclusively devoted to the villages with news, commentary, and more. And yes, they have Tom's Picks, a free referral for people who are looking for a company to do work for them. Tom's Picks will refer the company that fits your needs, and all we ask is that you tell them where you heard about them. Call Tom's Picks at 804-1223 and pick up your copy of the Village Spectator today. Now read Ocala downtown newspaper online. Uh, Thank you. 12 minutes before 8 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. It definitely looks like it's going to rain out there. There's a 90% chance we'll see some rain. High temperatures in the upper 80s today. Uh, and then things change drastically tomorrow. Only a 20% chance of rain tomorrow. So look for thunderstorms this morning, thunderstorms this afternoon. And uh, like I say, high temperatures in the mid to upper 80s. Did you get a hold of our winner? Uh, I did not. I, I called a phone number that I thought was hers because she was breaking up. So Edwina, if, if you're there, if you could call the office line at 351-8000. Uh, just leave your telephone number again and the zip code. That way I can verify I have the correct number and uh, then I can call the Civic Theater and they'll uh, call you to see what date you would like to go to the theater. So please call back, leave your phone number and your zip code. There you go. And we're giving away two more tickets to Rounding Third at yep, fun, fun with during Joe. Fun with Joe today? Yep. Okay, so... All right, so before we do anything, it seems like some of you are interested in the TEDx talk. So let me tell you a little bit more about this. I've, I did find the list of, of uh, speakers. Some of them we know, Robin. Charles A. Archer is the paddler, so he'll be speaking. Okay. Mar Mary Baggs, we know Mary. Oh, yes, we do. She's, uh, her, her um, I believe the title of their speaking thing will be, his will be the paddler. His will be the, uh, hers will be Eternal Optimist. Yeah, she's wonderful. Adonica Shaw is a philanthropreneur, a philanthropist and a social entrepreneur. She'll mm -hmm. be speaking. John Shields will be speaking. He's a strategist. He seems familiar. I'm not sure if I know him. Ahmad Shami is a conflict analyst. He'll be speaking at the uh, TEDx Ocala event in November. Cindy Grimes is a lady we know. Yeah. Uh, her, her talk is called mm -hmm. Dream Maker. Yep. Well, she, she really did a wonderful job. With the morphing of her magazine. Amy Morin uh, is uh, a mental strength trainer. She looks very familiar to me. Tim Conway, we know. Oh, yes, we from do. From Carol Burnett Show. Yep. No, I'm teasing. It's not that one. Well, we had Tim in the studio. Yeah, this is That's that right. Tim. Tim Conway is a neuropsychologist. <laughs> this guy 
is on the board of directors for the uh, Marion County Literacy Council yep. and just made so much sense when he spoke. No wonder they have chosen him to be one of the TEDx Ocala speakers. Yes. Uh, just just like this guy a lot. John Mills is a privacy expert. He will be speaking. Gosh, why is his name familiar? And M.K. Mueller is uh, the, the gratitude guru, mm. a lady. She looks familiar, too. So Yeah, I know. Okay. We, we, Manal we doing some good stuff. So Manal is, yeah. is uh, hosting it, it sounds like, with, what was it, Princess something? Yeah, Princess. So. Princess something. 39 days, 7 hours, 2 minutes, and 18 seconds before the, <laughs> the thing begins. Oh, nice. If you go to TEDxOcala.com, you'll see exactly uh-huh. what I just saw. Wonderful. All right. Uh, thank you for... I think it's You're great. interested. All right, let's see a few things in the news. Uh, the president um, of our country, Mr. Obama, and the president of Russia, Mr. Putin, talked yesterday about Syria, and um, of course they didn't agree. Syria's been going through a four-year civil war with rebels fighting to oust President Assad. Mm-hmm. Russia has been supporting Assad, while the U.S. has been supporting those trying to kick him out. But they do agree on ISIS, which is camping out in Iraq and Syria. Uh, but Obama and Putin have different ideas of how to get rid of of I, the ISIS problem. Well, Obama should listen to the American people and he will get the idea. Uh, in his speech, Obama said that the U.S. is willing to work with Russia in Syria, uh, but not if it helps keep Assad in power. Putin said that Assad needs to stay because his military is fighting ISIS. Mm-hmm. As you know, Russia has even sent some military um, equipment yep. uh, to help out. Um, Obama doesn't like that. They, Obama says that Russia is propping up Assad for an escalating civil war. Yeah, look at all the U.S. military equipment Obama sent over there, too. So anyway, but Putin did say it, there was a surprisingly open uh, feeling about the conversation that the two men were having. So uh, it's interesting as onlookers to see that. Yep, and uh, TJ and his wife and his mother-in-law were in New York City the other day, and TJ took a, a video from his phone camera of the of uh, uh, President Obama's uh, entourage going down the road. There you go. That was pretty cool. For those who don't know, TJ is Robin's son. Pretty cool. Uh, yesterday in Afghanistan, the Taliban took over a major city for the first time since the U.S. invasion in 2001. <clears throat> wow. The city, Kunduz, K-U-N-D-U-Z. Gosh is economically important since it falls along a key trade route. Yeah. It's also important since it was one of the last Taliban cities to fall 14 years ago. Yesterday, the Taliban also freed hundreds of inmates from the city's prison. Overnight, Afghan forces started to fight back with help from the United States. We launched an airstrike on the city last night while you were sleeping. This comes just months after the Taliban admitted that its leader had been dead for years and named a new guy to take his place. Um, So anyway, postpone, you probably see this coming, Mm -hmm. the Taliban-Afghan government peace talks probably won't be happening anytime soon. No. We mentioned this one yesterday. Shell has decided not to drill in the uh, the Alaskan Arctic Mm-hmm. <clears throat> That's good news for environmentalists. Bad news for those hoping to make money from the oil. Yeah. The reason they're backing out is not because of pressure from environmental groups, but because it simply doesn't look like it'll pay enough money. Okay, There's not enough oil there to dr- worth to make it worth drilling for. Yeah, they'll find another place. That'll be conducive. Alcoa to also announced yesterday that it's also making some changes thanks to a shaky Chinese economy. Demand is down for things like aluminum and mm-hmm. steel. Uh, which are basically what Alcoa makes its money on. So they're splitting into two companies to focus more on each of the separate businesses. Mm -hmm. Good for them. There you go. Smart people run those businesses. We should have a business Uh, man. NASA did not announce the discovery of little green men yesterday, but they did (laughs) announce the possibility of water. My question for the scientists, if we can ever get one on, is if there is flowing water on Mars, then wouldn't there be evaporation? There should be. And therefore, wouldn't there be clouds? And therefore, wouldn't there be rain? Mm -hmm. And therefore, wouldn't we be able to see this? Yeah. I mean, wouldn't we be able to see clouds in the sky in the pictures from the little rover thing? Mm -hmm. Either that or it's water that for some reason doesn't evaporate. You know, there's nobody who ever said everything that is true on Earth is true on other planets. Mm Mm-hmm. 
Uh, you never know. But anyway, it is interesting. They did say, I mean, they, they are more scientific than I am. <laughs> but I mean, it just seems like a logical question. Mm-hmm. If there's water, shouldn't there be clouds? Shouldn't, exactly. we, shouldn't we be able to see the clouds? Yep. It seems like an easy question to ask. NASA scientists say that water still flows periodically on the surface of the red planet, or it appears to. Well, maybe they should have the the rover run over that trickle of water, and then <laughs> and then it and and See then if there's it, a yeah yeah, <laughs> and it turn around and take a picture of the tracks or Puddle something. Puddle jumping, yeah. Exactly. I mean, why not? You know that'll yeah. But who's going to pull it up if it gets stuck in the mud? Oh, that's true. Do I, do I have somebody on the phone? Else? I don't know. Do I have somebody on the phone? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, uh, Jim. I'm I'm. Uh, Pointing out that on October 5th at uh, the Klein Center in uh, College of Central Florida between 6 and 8 p.m., um, Congressman Nugent is having a, uh, a town meeting uh, to explain how people can uh, apply to the uh, five service academies. Uh, uh, their children in uh, high school uh, wish to go to any of the five service academies. All right. And uh, you were gracious enough, Jim, to send us his uh, press release, and we've put it on the uh, WOCA Facebook page, but we will be reposting it periodically so that people will uh, be uh, familiar with it, the U.S. Service Academy Open House. So, gosh, Jim, thank you for what time? When, what date is that? that? Say again? What date is that? October 5th, Monday, October 5th. 5th, okay, this coming Monday, okay. Yep. All right, thank you, Jim, appreciate that. Yes. Have a good day. What Bye. happened? To, what happened to the close relationship we had with him? He's no longer our, our friend. Well, he's not on the radio anymore. So. All know. right, and finally, the last one I <laughs> wanted to bring up: the Obama <laughs> administration plans to close the last remaining American-owned uranium enrichment facility in the United States, while simultaneously moving forward on a controversial nuclear deal with Iran yeah. that permits the Islamic Republic to conduct ongoing and significant uranium enrichment. That's horrible. The U.S. Department of Energy has informed Centrus Energy that it will end the American Centrifuge Project in Piketon, Ohio, on September 30th. That's tomorrow. Gosh. Notices have been issued to some 235 workers that their jobs are in jeopardy. Of course, they're not going to have a job anymore. Obama's firing them. A joint Department of Energy National Nuclear Security Administration statement said... Quote, we have concluded that continued support from the federal government for additional data from Piketon operations has limited remaining value, unquote. Representative Brad Wenstrup, a Republican from Ohio, said this is beyond belief. Yes. He said, while this administration is greenlighting uranium enrichment in Iran and legitimizing 6,000 Iranian centrifuges, they're shutting down domestic production here in America. Yes, they are. Unquote. They did the same thing to NASA. Congressman Wenstrup called the closure decision a dangerous threat to our national security. Yep. It is an announcement, in, in its announcement, that it will shutter American Centrifuge. The Department of Energy announced the enrichment technologies developed at Piketon may be transferred to the Oak Ridge National Laboratory in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. As recently as 20 years ago, the United States produced nearly 50% of the global supply of enriched uranium. Today, however, U.S. production accounts for only about 10% of the global supply with Russia, France, and the United Kingdom, and Germany, and Holland producing the bulk of the world's enriched uranium. Yep, the U.S. is no longer a superpower. One centrist energy fact sheet uh, warns, quote, the United States is at risk of losing its only future capability to enrich uranium to meet key national security needs, unquote. Yep. Another company called a company called Urenco, Urenco USA, owned by a consortium of European firms, operates another uranium enrichment facility in New Mexico. Noting that Congress has provided full funding for the project, Wenstrup called the Department of Energy's decision, which was announced on September 11th, quote, a shameful and unilateral move. Uh, Steve Penrod reacted to the announcement saying, we are disappointed. Yes. All right, we'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source. 
Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. Looks like Senate lawmakers are about to feed the meter for the government shutdown clock. The Senate is set to pass a stopgap spending bill that would keep the government up and running through December 11th. It sidesteps calls to defund the agency amid allegations of profits from its tissue donation program. After the spending bill clears the Senate and heads to the House, where outgoing Speaker John Boehner has said it will get a vote. Fox Radio's Rachel Sutherland. President Obama and the Cuban president will be sitting down together at the U.N. this a day after face-to-face with the Russian president. Dealing half with Ukraine, but mostly focusing on Syria. Putin, of course, proposing what he says is a broad coalition, like the type that fought Hitler to fight ISIS and terrorism. But that, he says, must include strongman Bashar al-Assad. Fox's Eric Sean, President Obama, rejecting that proposal. And Volkswagen says 1.8 million of its vehicles are among those affected by the emissions rigging scandal. Fox News, we report, you decide. There's more to Fox News Radio than meets the ear. Go behind the headlines and join the conversation on the hottest stories of the day on the Fox News Radio Facebook page. Be a part of the Fox News Radio Facebook fan community. Post comments and tell us your opinions. See behind the scenes photos and videos and post your reactions to the stories that matter to you. Click the like button on Facebook and connect with breaking news and features like Fox in the Fast Lane, House Call for Help, and more. Go to Facebook.com slash Fox News Radio. Weeknights, we're busting out a brand new lineup. First, market fraud, government abuse, corruption. At five, nothing's off limits on money with Melissa Francis. Then, from bloated bank fees to consumer scams. At six, Jerry's exposing the issues impacting your wallet. Plus, get smart market insight and trusted analysis you won't find anywhere else. At seven, Lou Dobbs is all business. And the first and last name in business, Cavuto. Shedding light on the biggest stories, making headlines at eight. Only on the Fox Business Network, giving you the power to prosper. Hi, this is JP from Penn Flooring here in Ocala. I would like to invite you to come in and visit our spacious showroom where we have solutions for every style and budget. From wall-to-wall carpet to hardwood wood floors and tiles, we have an unsurpassed selection of flooring. At Penn Flooring, we've provided quality customer service with a family touch for over 25 years. Visit our website at penflooring.com or come by our showroom, 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge. Penn Flooring, quality customer service with a family touch. Dean Powell Pasture Mowing, 352-629-2440. In addition to our pasture mowing service, we also offer fence row spraying. Now is the perfect time to get ahead on weed control for an overall aesthetic appearance. Dean Powell Pasture Mowing, 352-629-2440 or online at powellgene, G-E-N-E, at yahoo.com. We are licensed and insured. Dean Powell Pasture Mowing, 352-629-2440. It's the end of the fiscal year, and that means budget cuts and number crunching. Now's the time of the year you're evaluating your expenses, planning your budget, and finding ways to save money and increase efficiency to maximize profits. Dex Imaging understands and delivers. Call Dex Imaging today for a free document management evaluation. Cutting your office expenses is as easy as calling Dex Imaging. 352-266-0333. Start saving money today and increase your bottom line with Dex Imaging. Printers, copiers, and fax machines that increase office productivity and save you money. No one understands your bottom line better. Call Dex Imaging today, 352-266-0333. Or check them out on the web at DexImaging.com. That's D-E-X-Imaging.com. Or call 352-266-0333 for your free... 